you guys know that I'm a fan of parallel charging, uh, if you watch my channel. And uh, some people are not fans of parallel charging and have spoken about the risks. Of course, the biggest risk is that you plug in two batteries with an excessive voltage difference and you end up with an excessive current flow and you end up with an excess of fire. And that's not good, of course. Another risk, though, is that your batteries may not be balanced as well if you parallel charge as if you individually charge. There's a person who commented on my previous video about parallel charging and said that if you parallel charge, the charger cannot balance the packs. And I'm gonna show you that that is definitely not true. But in principle, when you, par when you plug the batteries in parallel and you also plug in the balance leads, then all of the cells, the individual cells, will exchange current with each other until they're at the same voltage. It's, that's the nature of things being plugged in parallel. That if there's a voltage difference between two things that are plugged in parallel, current will flow between them proportional to the voltage difference, uh, Ohm's law, and, uh, and, and the current will continue to flow until the voltage difference goes away. Okay, so the, that's why you don't want to plug batteries in parallel if there's too much of a voltage difference between them. The guideline I use is 0.1 volts per cell. This is a four cell. I wouldn't want to plug in two packs that were more than 0.4 volts apart. Uh, but we're always looking at the pack voltage, right? But we also need to be thinking about the individual cells. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. Now, if we look at these, I've just flown these packs. Let's look at how out of balance they are. 15.03 volts difference of 0.010 for that one, 15.06, difference, 15.07, 0.009, 3 that's not very much at all, 14.98, 0.08, Fifteen point oh oh, point oh one oh, fifteen point oh one, point oh oh four. Okay, so you can see now that those packs are not completely balanced with each other or within themselves, but they're all within a safe voltage range to plug in to the parallel charge board. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and because I know that they are very very close. I'm not going to worry about plugging in the discharge leads and letting the current flow before I then plug in the balance leads. Now actually, I checked seven batteries, but there's only room for six here on my parallel charging board. So if you see a discrepancy, that's why. Now if what I've said is correct, then after I let these batteries sit for a while, all of the cells should have balanced each other out and all of the batteries should be equally in or out of balance with each other. By plugging the cells in parallel, the cells balance with each other. So all of cell one balances with all of the other cells ones, all of cell two balances with all the other cell two, etc. automatically. The batteries are not balanced within themselves. Cell one, two, three, and four are not the same, but all of cell ones on all the batteries should be the same because they plugged in parallel and they exchanged current until they were at the same voltage level. Let's just check that. 15.02, and if we just check the max minus min, it's 0 0.010. Now let's just pick another one at random. I'm not gonna do them all, because that will be annoying. Okay, 0 0.010, just like I said. Let's see this one, 0 0.010. So, the idea that you cannot balance when you parallel charge, completely false. In fact, parallel charging immediately brings all the cells into balance with the other corresponding cells in the packs. But can you balance charge? Well, I'm about to show you because I'm about to start a balance charge cycle here. Okay, and I will begin the charge cycle. Battery check, and away it goes. Now I'm gonna show you this when it's done, and. It will be, they will be in balance. You'll see that everything will be perfectly balanced. But there's one more thing that I want to show you. Two, two for the price of one. And that is a, a, a potential risk of parallel charging that you may not be aware of. I do, I parallel charge and I like it, but I never said it was, wasn't without risk. You need to be aware of the risks. 
these batteries are currently charging at a rate of get my clamp meter out. Clamp meters are awesome. Oh, hang on, let me move the camera just a little. 10.7 amps. Okay. 10.7, 10.8 amps, it's ramping up. 10.8 amps is going into the batteries. So it should be 10.8 divided by 6 equals roughly 1.4. 1.8, I suck uh, at that. Uh, amps going into each battery. But is that true? Let's find out. 2.29 amps going into that battery. Let's see if I can pick out another one of these here. Clamp meters are awesome. 1.48 amps. Wait a minute. Let's try this one. 1.76 amps, and in fact, if I continue to check all these batteries, I will find that each of them is receiving a different amount of current. Why is that? The answer is that each one does not have an identical internal resistance. When they come from the factory, they have pretty close internal resistance. So, because the, but after you run cycles through the packs again and again and again and again, the packs all have different internal resistance. And so, when you push current into the parallel charge board, it is distributed to the batteries proportional to their resistance. And as you can see, the difference can be pretty substantial. So, if you're going to parallel charge and you want to charge your batteries at no greater than a 1C rate, you should be careful. You can't necessarily charge at 1C times the number of, of batteries, you see. We can see that because of the differing internal resistance of the packs, if we were to do that, some batteries might be charging at 2 or 2.5C, two and, and so other, other batteries might be charging at half a C or 3 quarter C, okay? So if you have a certain max charge rate that you want to charge at and you're parallel charging, you should actually charge at a lower rate than that if you want to really make sure that you never exceed that. Now personally, I don't have a problem charging batteries at 2C. I feel like that's pretty safe. And I feel like most of the, most of the LiPos today for RC can probably be charged at, at a little higher than that even without damage. That's just a hunch. I haven't tested that and I could be wrong. But if, if I really cared about charging slower than 2C, I would charge these guys at 1C and know that maybe some of them might be even a little more than 2C. Right, like this guy here is getting, hang on. This guy here is getting 2.2 amps, it's, uh, so it's still less than 2C, right? That's 1.8, 1.4, 1 2.8 amps would be the most, it would be 2C. So it's still below 2C, but it's way over 1C. All right, so there's another little tip for you. When this charge cycle is done, I will come back, and we will see if these batteries were balanced, and we will see if that guy who said, don't parallel charge because you can't balance when you parallel charge, was right or wrong. Hint, he's wrong. Okay, see you then. All right, here we are. These are the same batteries, just, uh, just outside, <laughs> and let's see if they are balanced. Okay, and moment of truth, 0 0.012, 0 0.007, 0 0.007, 0 0.007, 0 0.007, 0 0.007. 0 0.007, 0 0.007. So why was one of them 0 0.012, 0 0.012 and all of the rest of them 0 0.007? Because that was the one, I remember I have seven batteries here and only six slots on my parallel charge board. So that was the one that I charged by itself. All of the batteries that were parallel charged are balanced exactly the same, just like, uh, just like I said. Okay, there you go. Now I'm gonna fly. Yay, bye.